takes over. Hello everyone, in this video we'll be discussing decal machine and getting started with it um, and my approach of it uh, being a hard ops user. Um, no amount of uh, tutorials done by me will do it the type of justice that uh, machine himself does on tutorials on his channel showing how to use it but I will be at least demonstrating it so that way going forward it won't be uh, something surprising to see me use in tutorials because it has become an essential part of my workflow decals is something that I have wanted in blender forever uh, the only program that I felt done it right previously was Keyshot, but now we at least have a fighting chance which has completely changed my opinion on cycles as a render engine compared to octane and all sorts of things so first before we continue let me tell you that this is a cycles heavy plugin so if cycles is your primary engine like mine uh, you will get far if you're using internal um, why are you using internal so with that let's go ahead and get, get started so uh, we'll press Z to end the render view and just a quick uh, commercial spot this moment brought to you by Group Pro. So we're going to select this object and press Control X to create a group. Uh, press Control C to put the cursor in the center. Press Control X to set group origin to 3D cursor. If you uh, are interested in Group Pro, there will be a discount link provided with Hardoff because he is the um, next plugin that I'll be going over. Um, he's recently agreed to a uh, deal where uh, subscribers of Hard Ops will receive a discount if they choose to go with this product. Um, I have been using it forever and I can tell you this is great. But why am I throwing in ads for Group Pro in this? Let's go ahead and get with Decal Machine. First we'll press D and choose a uh, decal, my favorite decal ever. Now this decal probably shouldn't be used by me because it's giving credit to this guy, Machine. However, it is just too good of a decal to leave out. So as you see, I just inserted it like an insert. Let's see. Let's try that again. And we'll bring back our sun. So now I'll uh, reproject it on this surface. Uh, put a couple of divisions in it. And... There we go, and we'll just give it a little extra height. And there we go. So the first thing's first. Next, we'll uh, go over here and choose some um, inserts like this circle here. Uh, if we press Alt-Z, we can see what it looks like. But um, I definitely uh, know what these decals look like uh, in rendered mode. So. What we'll do is uh, actually ungroup it for a moment just so we can uh, mirror it across itself because we'll be adding it to a group at the end. And we're just going to copy and paste and put these in places. And you can see in render mode, they look as if they truly exist. Uh, this is thanks to the uh, special shader that is uh, in use here. I haven't even looked inside of it or anything like that. Like, uh, to me, I'm just to the point where if it works, I'll just use it. I'll just use it. Uh, now, we see in a case right here where when we render, it shows this black border. That was precisely what I wanted to catch. So we'll just give it some height. And we'll just select this one. And we'll also give it a little height. And now it's fine. So now whenever we clone this around, it'll be more um, sticking out of the surface, preventing us from having those problems. But you can see that it's something that you have to be aware of. In fact, usually it's not so much of an issue as it is at this very moment. To the point where I usually don't even have to think about it. Let's try it again. Okay, so now we can just go bananas with this thing. So back in the day, I would be doing this using inserts. And so I'm also using it really simple here and lazy. And that's the idea is that you can really just use this tool to, to iteratively try out ideas and see them in a finished state, which is kind of what, what hard ops was supposed to be. 
um, the moment I saw this, I was, I was blown away because the idea had never even occurred to me. And this guy had been showing off art forever. Uh, just on Blender Artist, he was top row twice. Um, he was posting on Twitter just this crazy stuff where it looked like there were booleans in curved surfaces. And I was pretty driven by his images to, uh, you know, figure out and decrypt what he was doing and make it a more available workflow. And so, you know, for this to actually be the answer at the very end, you know, I almost have a sigh of relief because um, I built like spherical drones and all these objects where I've been fighting edges all over the place just to, um, you know, where's my favorite decal? It's probably not even here anymore. It's here because these are all blank. Why is it so blank down here? All right, so we'll just uh, put this one here, and we'll just um, all right, and we'll uh, go at another insert here. I'm, I'm really curious why the logos aren't showing. Um, to be honest, the uh, decal machine portion of this I have rehearsed uh, all day, uh, just so you know, and. I'm now at the point where I just give up. I'm just going to just demonstrate it as it is. Um, I'm usually obsessed with ensuring that every demonstration shows it in its best light, you know, like a salesman. Um, but this is literally how the tool's behavior is when I use it. So you see me using face snapping and stuff like that. Um, and that's really it. Like. Um, like I bring these things in, I stick them to the face. Like you can do trickier things with it. Like for example, uh, let's go with um, this latch here. This thing's a beast. And we'll press D, decal project. We'll see what that looks like. That will work. However, we will need to select this stuff and delete all these other faces and we'll mirror it to the other side so if we really render this out real quick and analyze the shape here if you were to have to put that shape in the surface believe me it would not be an easy day and and that's really where this tool shines is um you know on curved surfaces you have tools like decal project here where you can actually superimpose the decals onto surfaces that would ordinarily never be able to take such geo in the form of a subset or an insert so it was extremely eye-opening on my side um, and and also a screw collection is very nice um, as a guy who is a connoisseur of screws and bolts I mean not in real life you know that would be crazy to have a big bucket but um, you know just in in general in fact I'm pretty sure me cloning it around like this wasn't a, wasn't a smart idea because I'm going to have to zoom in and adjust the decal height. There we go. And we also put one here. Let's render that out. So I'm going to be saving this as a different file. So that way um, we can kind of compare what it looks like, you know, with hard ops and what it is with decal machine because you know I'm sorry if this is a not a very good tutorial um, on this like I said he definitely does a much better job on his channel and on top of that right now it's at version one so it's not exactly predictable it's not predictable like um, it is with booleans and such so I'm still learning this at the uh, same time as uh, everyone else. In fact, um, I had asked him a question yesterday and he, he kind of told me, it's like, dude, why are you asking me SFQs? I felt so embarrassed. Um, but he had a point, you know, I've been so busy with everything else that um, I hadn't been reading his documentation, 
like I normally would be recommending to other people. Uh, people write me all the time on Steam, and they're like, hey, Blender Tips, A, Google. Um, you know, I'm doing stuff. Like, I can't just, you know, there's there's channels for that. Usually I recommend people to uh, the discount, uh, discount Discord Blender group because, you know, there's people there lurking 24 hours a day that are just waiting to answer questions. But, I mean, if it's a, um, you know, customer-related hard ops question or a support issue, by all means, definitely send me an email. Um, but it drives me crazy when notifications pop up on the video. So, um, you know, I recently got this new monitor. So now more notifications are popping up on my primary screen than ever. So we will mirror this over here and look at it. So every time we render it, it just, it speaks to me more and more. Um, the idea of putting text scribble on things is stuff that I'd always uh, danced around with during the texturing phase. So the fact that we can now use labels as a uh, almost a modeling tool um, is going to definitely open a door. Like I plan on doing tutorials on making custom decals in addition to um, you know less is more type um, workflow videos because I mean you know you see me go on these cubes and I just kind of go insane. So we're going to save this. I'm actually going to call this uh, H9BC Tuts uh, Two. Uh, wait, BC, I mean DM. And we'll uh, take care of that. Now, let's go to layer two, and uh, we're just going to play with some other tools that um, are less talked about. So we're just going to take this cylinder, C sharp it. We'll give it a bevel width, lower it down to one segment. And, uh, you know, for the bottom here, we're just going to demote that because it'll just look better. So we'll just bring this face up. And from here, we're going to use decal machine and insert um, this decal. So we'll go to layer one. We'll press M and hold shift and press two to borrow this light on layer two. And this is what this decal looks like. It's not really sticking on the surface because, you know, it's a damn plane. But I just want to rotate it sideways. And we're going to go under mesh tools and choose twist 360. So Twist 360 is a, an old school hard ops function that will basically twist something in an array of 360 degrees. So we'll put a couple of loop cuts in here. You know, we won't slide them around because we don't want to mess with things and have to go into T-Panel and choose, a, you know, save the UVs or whatever. But we're just taking one of uh, machine's inserts and using a classic hard ops function on it to... Um, you know, get something a little different here, but but for our context, right? So this is what we have. So the next thing after that is I'm going to take a plane and we're just going to decal slice. We're just going to duplicate this. And let's look at it in uh, rendered mode. So this is what we're looking at. So, you know, we're going to step it and then we're going to status reset which will basically we bake the bevel and then we reset the mesh to be basically an undefined mesh so you see the logo all faded um, as you see the logo change that kind of will help you keep up with my workflow so you see when I C sharpen it becomes a um, orange which means that now it's in a C sharp state I meaning you'll no longer do just hiding the mesh business we'll S sharp it again we'll apply to scale and we'll S sharp and wonder why this is being weird Probably because it's set at 45 degrees. If we look at it under the uh, misc here, we would have set it to 30. It would have caught it. But earlier, as you remember, we changed that. So we'll just leave that. Do a couple of extrusions here. And, and yes, of course, we're going to get all boxy with it. So we got this insert here. And I actually don't like the way it looks uh, so close to each other. So maybe... Maybe 1.5 as the distance, and we'll just uh, do some compensation here. You know, another thing is since I upgraded to Windows 10, there's just been this hang whenever I select parameters in the window. It drives me crazy because, you know, I can't ever downgrade. I'm not a downgrade type of guy, but it's horrible because that three-second wait just stacks up. And it happens all the time. Um, I've been waiting for it to actually get fixed before I started doing uh, videos again because it, it drives me crazy. 
and I don't know why it's happening. I mean, I don't want to nuke the computer or anything because I like it. Um, we're going to go ahead and just make this chrome, and we're going to go under the cutting area down here. We're just going to choose classic plastic, and we're going to go in box cutter with Alt W, press Shift Z to get rid of this dango grid. The grid is great until you don't need it. Then it drives you crazy, just like the mirroring. Uh, right now we're discussing the mirroring because, you know, the mirror is all right. But sometimes um, I don't need it mirroring all the dang time, so it drives me crazy. So it would definitely be good to uh, find a solution to make it some sort of a uh, toggleable behavior. You know, we'll actually cut some gray out here. So material cutter is just one of those things. Like, I mean, my best cubes are me coming to and I'm like, whoa, who did this to this cube? It's like a human sacrifice, guys. Like, you know, I just wake up in the woods and there's this cube that's just been, it's went through a, a different dimension and back. So, you know, I try to sometimes capture that in the videos by trying to tune out, but tune it out too bad on you guys here but you know it is an important part of my um, artistic process so right here I'm select this edge I'll select this edge and I'll press D um, if you know why that's going on congratulations you've been paying attention but down in the uh, menu that's not here under the select options I have um, shortest added as um, my D option. So D is a very busy button. D does a lot of things, but it's not doing a grease pencil. So here we're going to just grab this insert. This is a, you know, classic, it, at least to me, you know, it looks like one of mine, but you know, he's made it his. So that's great. Um, it's like when, whenever a concept artist draws over my, my work, it's like, oh yeah, that's exactly what I meant. You know, totally, because they always catch the things that I miss. Um, so we'll just mirror this to the other side. And let's render it out, see what it looks like. we got a little bit of garbage in here. And um, at this time, I'm not aware of how the decal project works. Um, I just know how to use it. Um, this tool, I'm still uh, learning my way through and tearing into. So, I mean, once I begin mutating the workflow we'll, we'll look at this in textured mode so that way I can put a loop cut stretch it out with a uh, control B and then just extend this so I mean once I begin mutating this workflow to make it truly mine I think we'll begin to uh, get some interesting results out of this I'm already uh, discussing the ideas of uh, maybe having five samples or not five samples, five frames as an animation and create like animated inserts that are image sequences because it could technically be a little bit more predictable than having objects rotating in the viewport with uh, you know local and global rotations and all that business and constraints. Like it would just be hard to uh, keep up with. Not to say it would be impossible. More likely that'll be done too because I always love a uh, hardware solution. Like I consider hard ops a, a hardware type solution while decal machine here is more of a software um, if you're using the render engine cycles this thing is the best but if you're using octane you know uh, you might have to wait but we are discussing uh, the possibility of making it support octane and blender as well but at this time I am just hardcore back into cycles which I never thought I would actually say because not to say I disown cycles but I've just been enjoying the speed of Octane. Like, uh, after they added Adaptive Subdivision Blender, I was also able to uh, understand it enough to try it out in Octane. I was just really impressed with um, how responsive it was. So, Cycles is uh, is making a comeback, you know. I, be honest, you know, there was a time when I thought, you know, it was done, you know, like, uh, it was at its, at its peak, but we're seeing that it's going to just get better. And that's, that's kind of crazy to, to even think of, you know. So we're just sticking things on here using basic tools, re-rendering it, seeing how it looks. 
But believe me, at the end, you won't recognize this thing. We'll put this here. We will decal project. And now we'll shift C, put an empty in the center of plane axes. But technically it doesn't matter. We'll go in local mode for a moment. From here, we're gonna put an array on it. And since decal machine works in a predictable manner in some functions, I know that the origin is precisely in the center because it does that. Um, we're gonna choose EMPTY, I guess it's empty 001 here. No, it's actually prime empty. So we'll remove that part. And now we can basically offset it using the empty. And we're just going to tile it around the object a little bit using the empty to offset it and then mirror it to the other side. So it'll be real easy. I'll try to um, actually get focused back on uh, the matter at hand here instead of uh, going off on tangents. So from here, I'll press D, adjust the decal height until it looks good on all of them. And we'll mirror it to the other side. And that is what we have. So technically we could scale it. Scaling always makes things look cooler. Uh, there's never anything wrong with scaling something down. And the other thing about decal machine is uh, because they're using parallax, they will look quite odd if you render without uh, perspective on. Um, if you're posting pictures rendered in orthographic, please stop. But that is also something you want to keep in mind. You know, we'll actually make that chrome just to uh, put a little interest in there. And so this is our piece so far. We're just making a little insert here. Um, so in the middle, you know, I just came up with an idea randomly that I haven't uh, thought of trying yet, but I just thought of based off of the intro for these videos. We'll just put this piece in the center. We'll make it gray. We'll choose an insert like this one. And voila. So now that we've done that, we can actually choose uh, a couple of more inserts. We'll put them here. We'll mirror them across. Maybe here. And as you see, they just they just work. So this, of course, is something that is being expanded and will eventually be able to export into other programs like Substance Painter and whatnot. I mean, of course, the goal is always to get this stuff into game engines. Um, you know, that decal slice just did not work out. Um, and instead of figuring it out, we could just be really lazy. Sometimes it's easier to just not fight with it. So here's an object so far, just real quick, real quick. Um, like when this tool came out, I was like, wow, talk about a tool that could murder my tool. Like this is the, and, and the, the greatest thing was, um, you know, I actually happened to have known the guy that made it. Like if this guy was like, Someone I had no idea who it was like, yeah, this is a very dangerously powerful tool. Um, and I'm hoping that, you know, I'm able to work with them in the future and um, making it better, adding uh, more integration to connect it with hard ops and connect it up with some uh, other tools that I think would give it some uh, interesting behavior. Like I would love to be able to draw the lines on the surface of a mesh like contours and stuff like that. But, um, you know, who knows what the future will hold. But um, this is just version one. So it has a long life ahead of it. So we got this cool little cylinder. We're going to select everything. And uh, press Alt-H to make sure we have nothing hidden. And we're going to press Control-X and Create Group. 
Shift C to put center the cursor. Control X. Use 3D cursors. So, you know, that's something I just have come to live with, but it's quite odd. So, with our cylinder, in fact, we got this big empty space right here. I want it to be there. Even if the neighborhood isn't suitable for this sort of mesh to live, we're going to make it happen. So, I'm just inserting a cube. So right now the mesh is still live as a boolean. Um, so before I C-sharp it, I definitely want to make sure that it's going to fit in nicely. So we'll wait a moment, let it go through. And this should be the last one I have to dig into. It looks like we may have to give it a little lip at the top to, you know, add to the cool factor. But we're just going to fit this shape in here. And the cool thing about Group Pro is you're able to put these little super groups inside of other groups. So I've been actually using all of them together. Like, uh, you know, we'll press uh, Control X and choose... Uh, where is it? Flip selection. And that'll just put it on the other side. So if we were to, you know, actually make some edits on this shape, because like I said, you know, it's not going to be a uh, perfect marriage just yet until we really just do some uh, stuff we probably are not supposed to do. Like that. Like that's a little heavy. But let's see how it works. So, of course, this sort of uh, workflow. Uh, you experience a bit of slowdown. So on the computer that I have now, you know, Replica 4 is what I call it. Um, I have a newer i7 than the one that I had on my older videos. So the performance is um, unbelievably fast. So I can definitely expect um, other people to be experiencing issues when they're using this on lesser computers or, dare I say, Macs. Um, Actually, this one is mirrored. Now that one is mirrored, and the third one needs to mirror. So now, we shall render this real quick. And just see what we have here. So... You know, before we wrap this up and get on to uh, making something a little cooler, now that we um, have a basic introduction to these tools, I was actually thinking, um, what if for this version of Hard Ops, I did a series of uh, Hard Ops tutorials that were based off of requests that actually were reasonable not saying give me requests, but uh, there was a couple of people that were like, hey, I like that gun you did. You should do that gun as a tutorial. Um, you know, someone else was saying, you know, the helmet that you did would have made a nice tutorial if it was narrated. So I might, you know, revisit those things and actually uh, do narrated versions of them to um, be more interesting um, than uh, messing with cubes for all the videos of this version. So stay tuned, but we will go ahead and end it here. But what I'll do is actually pause this, bring up the previous sessions queue, so we can actually see the difference. All right, so I have both cubes rendering now. So before we close out this video, I will at least say, you know, this test is a little gimp because believe me, I've been known to go insane on some cubes with just hard ops or just box cutter. So I mean, we probably could just cut all this stuff in it, but it would be crazy and be a ton of work be like a 10 hour video but I've been seeing so many people who have picked up the tools of um, decal machine and hard ops and using them in conjunction 
and making some very impressive stuff. And I think it's because of the fact that you can stick these things and not have to worry about the geo. Like, literally, um, just forget about it. I mean, if you're using cycles, why not? Just it, it's, it's all about that concept artist way of thinking um, until we're exporting and stuff. And then it's, you know, serious business after that. But the difference that it introduces in speed and efficiency and the ability to iteratively go back and forth on these things just can't be beat. So with that, I'll wrap up this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.